Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. Profitability is the amount of profit that the business is generating for its owners. And we have a number of measures that we use to measure profitability or metrics or ratios. The first one is the gross profit percentage, and that is equal to gross profit divided by revenue. Both of these, um, both of these measures are from the income statement. You'll remember the income statement from the first section of this module. Uh, and at the top of the income statement, you start off with revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. So the gross profit percentage measures the profit that the company is generating from um, its operations, only accounting for the, the costs that have to do with either making or buying in the product. So it only accounts for the cost of goods sold. Um, it doesn't account for other expenses. So gross profit um, is um, uh, the profit that you're making after you have paid for uh, buying in or making the products. Operating profit percentage includes more uh, costs or expenses in it. It's operating profit divided by revenue. So you take um, the um, operating uh, profit and that takes into account other expenses like uh, sales, uh, sales, selling expenses, general expenses, and administration expenses uh, into account. So operating profit tells you how much profit you're making after paying both the costs of um, making or buying in the products and the selling general administration expenses as well. And then the net profit percentage, that's, I mean, I guess what most people would call the bottom line. It's the profit for the financial year after paying all expenses, including tax and interest, which are the two that are not in the, in the, in the, in, in the first two uh, ratios. So tax and, uh, tax and interest are included in here. And that gives you a, a measure of the amount of profit that's been generated after paying all your expenses, uh, essentially. So here's an example of how this works. We've got our revenue here, uh, cost of sales 700, and our gross profit of 300,000. So our operating, or our gross profit percentage is going to be 300,000 divided by a million. Gross profit divided by revenue, uh, which is 30%. Our operating profit is going to be, uh, you can see the operating profit here is 150,000 uh, and operating costs have been subtracted. So operating profit is 150,000 divided by revenue of a million, which is 15%. And net profit down the bottom here, this is the profit for the financial year, 100,000. So uh, it's 100,000 divided by a million, which is 10%. So how do we analyze profitability? Well, it's very important here to only compare between firms in the same industry or firms that do essentially the same thing. Um, it, it makes no sense to look at how profitable an airline is and compare it with a, a jewelry retailer or look at a supermarket versus a manufacturing firm. That kind of comparison makes no sense at all. Uh, so we need to be very um, cognizant of the industry and the nature of the business that we're dealing with because uh, businesses have, um, you know, 
different characteristics in relation to how much profit they can generate at these various uh, levels. We also need to worry about the mix of fixed and variable costs. So we need to look at um, the business and think about how much of their costs are fixed and how much are variable. And what do I mean by that? Well, variable costs are costs that go up when you um, when your scale increases. When you make more products, you get more costs. So things like raw materials. Uh, if you're making computers, then you would expect um, you know your variable costs of the parts that you're using for the computers to go up the more that you make those computers. However, uh, there are some costs that are fixed. So costs like administration costs um, uh, are, are generally fixed at least over a range of, of operations or activities. So, you know, um, uh, just because we make an extra uh, 20,000 computers in the factory does not mean that we need more accountancy staff or uh, marketing staff for stuff like that. It may mean uh, um, over time we might we might have to scale up these activities if the firm gets much bigger, but at least over a range we don't have um, an increase in, in costs because of that. So you need to look at the business and think about what are their fixed and variable costs uh, because this will have a big impact on things like the gross um, uh, profit percentage and, and the operating profit percentage. Um, a firm with very low uh, variable costs is probably going to have a high gross profit percentage. But then if it has high fixed costs, then the operating uh, profit percentage uh, could be much lower. Inventory value and holding time. So, um, you know, are we dealing in very valuable goods? Are we a jewelry store that buys in um, jewelry and, you know, might have them on display for two years before they sell them? Um, uh, when we come to sell them, then we're probably going to expect a much higher gross, uh, gross margin or gross profit percentage on selling those items of jewelry than you know a supermarket who buys in some milk uh, and expects to sell it within three or four days um, uh, so it again everything depends on the nature of the business and you probably really need to be given some uh, a, 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 a comparable company to compare these ratios against just being a able to you, you can't really um, uh, work out what kind of business or, or what kind of ratios a business should have just by looking at its own uh, accounts. Okay, those are the profitability ratios. We now want to look at some return ratios. And what return ratios do is they relate the information in the income statement about uh, how much profit the firm is making to information in the balance sheet about the resources that are being used to make that profit. So it uh, compares the profits that have been generated with the investment that is required for that business. So we're able to look at the return, the amount owners are getting back on their investment, or in fact, everybody's put finance in the firm is getting back on their investment. We look at a number of ratios here. Return on equity is equal to profit for the financial year divided by total equity. Uh, so what this does is this looks at the um, bottom of the income statement. The uh, profit for the financial year counts everything that has been, uh, all the expenses have been taken off there, divided by total equity, which is the um, the owner's investment in the business. Now, just note here that we have, you know, interest has already been taken out here uh, because it's profit for the financial year. That's after interest. So interest has been uh, uh, taken out. So um, uh, profit for the financial year is what's left uh, for uh, the owners. Return on capital employed is profit before finance costs. And this is important here. Um, this tells you that um, these profits are before interest. Um, uh, and why do we do that? Uh, because capital employed is total debt plus total equity. 
and um, when we're including debt in the bottom part of the ratio then we should include interest or exclude interest in the top part of the ratio because interest is part of the return to uh, the debt holders uh, so it wouldn't be reg it wouldn't be um, measuring return properly if we uh, didn't make this adjustment uh, so it's profit before finance co co costs over capital employed and then return on assets um, uh, that ratio is uh, profit before finance costs over total assets in fact you can use whichever measure of profit you want for this uh, for this module we'll use profit before uh, finance uh, costs so those are the three return ratios that you need to be aware of how do you calculate this well uh, let's look up here we've got an income statement here uh, there's profit before finance costs less interest 20 gives us profit before tax of 80 and tax is 10 which gives us 70 profit for the financial year equity is a thousand debt is 600 and the total finance uh, or capital employed is 1600 so the profit for the financial year over total equity is 70 over a thousand or seven percent and the return on capital employed is a profit before finance costs which are uh, 100 uh, and that is um, uh, sorry yeah that's 6.25 uh, percent and uh, we put that over um, the total finance which is 1600 the debt plus the equity okay so uh, those are that's how to calculate the returns analyzing returns on investment well in return on investment is different to the other ratios in that it can be compared across different firms and different cat asset categories um, so we can look at how much profit the firm is generating depending and look at how much resources it has and compare between firms you you can it's sensible to ask the question is this uh, does this airline have a higher return on investment than um, uh, you know a supermarket or or a uh, manufacturing company so it can be uh, compared across firms and indeed asset classes so you can even say well I'm making a return on investment in this company of five percent and I would only get you know half a percent if I invested this money in the bank or I would get two percent if I invested this money in property so you know um, you can uh, compare across asset classes as well when we're analyzing this we have to remember the risk return relationship so as I said earlier there is a relationship in finance between risk and return the more return we uh, are the more risk we take the more return we expect to get to compensate us from for taking that risk um, uh, so uh, for firms that are riskier we will expect their returns to be higher uh, we expect them to make higher returns and the return on equity may be higher than the return on capital employed due to trading on the equity so we saw a trading on the equity was earlier on where you financed an expansion with debt rather than with equity and this meant that you made a higher return to the owners um, however if you looked at the return on capital employed there that would um, uh, be the same as, uh, as, as, as the return on equity for a firm that didn't have any, any debt uh, involved so uh, just keep that in mind as well uh, again you know uh, wh whether a return on investment is good or bad for an individual firm um, it's also really useful to look at other firms in the same industry doing the same things and see what their return on investment is as well remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful bye